Okay. All right, you're on. I, I, uh, my name is Steve Cross. We're at uh, Cross Saw Mill and Lumber Company. Today is uh, February the uh, 16th, 2011. I'd say it's probably about 10:30, 11 o'clock in the morning. We got this a uh, uh, prime uh, river recovered cypress log that we're going to uh, attempt to cut into a uh, different kind of uh, lumber products. And uh, uh, this sawmill here is a machine we had assembled. It, it, it's uh, we're pretty sure the uh, biggest thin curve sawmill in the world. And uh, but, uh, we're going to uh, cut this stuff into different stuff. This thing is a. Uh, uh, a, a symbol out of uh, recycled material, what some people commonly refer to as junk, but uh, uh, we got it and uh, we're going to uh, make a cut on this. Uh, uh, this log, we're custom milling. I'm a, a fifth generation saw miller. My uh, family's had different types of powered saw mills back for a hundred years, and uh, we're going to uh, Cut this uh, log for Mr. Bruner, Adley Bruner, Bruner Lumber Company down in Ebro, Florida. And uh, maybe he could come over and uh, say a few words about the uh, uh, log. Okay, Adley, here you go. And, well, uh, yeah, you can just, it's just a big river covered uh, sinker cypress that's uh, about 26 foot long and about uh, 48 inches diameter. It should have 2,500 uh, board feet of lumber in it. We're going to cut it into some uh, full quarter for some quarter sawn materials, some eight quarter and some ten quarter for conference tables and uh, kitchen islands, just different uh, applications. But what do you know uh, about the log? Sir? What do you know about the log? We, uh, what, 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 what did the guy say? He thought it was around 650, yeah, 700 years yeah, old? Yeah, yeah, we had a, a, a guy come up and uh, he took a bit magnifying glass and uh, counted the rings, and he said that it was around 660 years old when it was cut down, and we estimate it was probably cut down uh, 150 years ago. So that means that the tree probably came up around the year 1200. And uh, so this tree was uh, starting to grow when the Vikings were still sailing the seas and probably about 300 years before uh, Columbus came to America. Been a long time. A, a, a while, <laughs> yeah. A, a, a 800, probably eight, around 800 years since it uh, first came up. Adley, how did you find it? It was laying in the bottom of the river. Just It was uh, sanded in. It was just a little skimmer on the top. You could just feel the top. It was sanded in in the river, and we uh, got a cable around it, and... Uh, Picked it up, got it to the landing, got it underneath a set of pontoons, and got a crane to uh, come pick it up, put it on a flatbed truck. What does it weigh? It weighs around 21 to 22,000 pounds, both cuts. This is just the top 12-foot cut. And you've got a 16-foot cut? we got about a, a four, about a, what, 15 left, I, I, depending I so, on the, yeah. the axe cut. Oh. The way the axe cut is on the end of it, the way it was chopped down with an axe, it's it's between 14 and 15 feet long. So when this thing was cut about 150 years ago, it was cut down by axes. Can you still see the axe mark? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, you can still see that. We were debating what to do with that, whether to take a, a, a section out of that and keep it whole or leave it on the ends of the boards to show the authenticity of the uh, All right, now we're going. Okay, okay. Like uh, uh, to walk out there we had a, a, a okay. guy right, do that. from uh, Tallahassee. Uh, uh, it's Tom Green, ain't it? Yeah, Tom Green came up and uh, counted the uh, uh, rings on this. You can still see the marks, but he got the magnifying glass. And started off, and uh, he, he's a, a don't move your hand there, Steve. A, 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 sorry, <laughs> the, uh, he's a, a, a trained tree scientist, and he came up with 660 coming back to here. And from what uh, uh, we know about axe cuts, we, we, we're pretty sure around about the, the mid 1850s to 1875 they changed to uh, uh, cross cuts. So you can somewhat date an axe cut, but probably a fair estimation of the uh, age this tree was cut down would probably be mid-1850s, which would put it 150 years ago when it was cut down and uh, 660 years when it was a standing tree. 
which would uh, uh, date it back to around the year 1200 when it uh, uh, came up. What can you tell, if anything, about the shape of those axe cuts? Was it single bit, double bit, or can you tell? Uh, well, it, it, it appears that, that this guy had, had a rounded, see the, the end of his axe? Right. Uh, uh, probably had a, 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 a somewhat of a moon shape or a round shape. And, and you can see that, that this was actually a, 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 a skilled, uh, a strong chopper because of his... Uh, <laughs> He's moving a lot of wood. Yes, yeah, 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 see right there? Uh, uh, that's one chop. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and how it, many growth rings per inch is that wood? How dense is that? Uh, uh, this would right be, there give you. Can you estimate uh, the number of rings per inch on that, Steve? Uh, 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 this would be uh, toward the outside. Six, they get tired. Six hundred and sixty, uh, uh, somewhere around twenty-five. Twenty-five growth rings per inch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From from here to here is. See that wider ring right mm -hmm. there? That's a wetter year. Right. Then right there's a little wider one. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I, uh, I've seen an awful lot of cypress and uh, Adley has too, but I, I would say this is going to be some uh, uh, prime material. The uh, uh, outer bark of this, you notice where it's got that waviness? Uh, uh, yes, the waviness or, or, or the muscular it, shape. It could be. And uh, uh, we, we're hoping and, and, and probably pretty sure that, that this is going to be a, a what you would call figured material or, or swirl grain material. Kind of like a it curly burl. heart pine in burl? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we, we're hoping it, it'll be similar. Oh. Uh, and, uh, well, now, uh, do you have an opinion as to whether that was a single bit axe or a double bit that cut that? Oh, now, uh, you know, uh, it looks fairly narrow for a for a single bit, don't you think? Yes, sir. Uh, well, if I was going to guess, I, I'd probably say double, but I wouldn't know for sure. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure back then the style was for people to uh, 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 spend a lot of time sharpening their axe, right. and, and they'd go out with, uh, uh, you know, when they sharpened it, if they could sit down with all their tools, they could put a much sharper edge on it. And, and they'd go into the woods with uh, uh, two sharp edges. I think double bit came double in bit around the time amazing. of the Civil War. Yes, yeah, sir. And before that, so if it was cut down before the Civil War, it was probably single bit. If it was cut down after, it was yeah, probably sir. double bit. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, 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 what would you estimate on, on the uh, <laughs> when it was cut down? Well, what's interesting to me is that okay. those rings, right back, in terms of uh, uh, rings per inch, seem even tighter than 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 really good heart pine. Yes. Yeah, sure. So it's much slower growing than heart pine. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. But uh, that, that, of, of course, you know, we we hadn't exactly established when it was cut down, right. and and uh, it, if we were able to to take that in down there and sand it. The, the climatologist could, could match the uh, ring count and uh, 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 figure out, you know, or, right. or, or estimate the year, and then you could uh, pretty much date it when it was cut down. The, does the other end of the log have the owner's stamp in the end of it? No, um, I did not find the brand. It does have a raft and pegs in it, and you'll well, see drill holes in it that and rope some. It, 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 it's very it, possible. It did have a stamp on it. it not only move your hand, Steve. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it's not only <laughs> possible, but it's probable that that other end down there that we actually miss some rings because it's with, with cypress like this area right here, from here to here. I, yeah, it, uh, uh, that's not one year's growth, and sometimes they actually get to growing so slow that if you sand this and magnify it, as a matter of fact, you can see right there that this, it, it, there's a whole bunch of little, it, it, these are, are, are very tight rings, but then these right here are getting down into the microscopic level. I don't know, can, can you see there? Yeah. See how? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See right there, yeah. they, they're probably... There's a section of them, they get a little bit wider right there uh -huh. for an inch, and yeah. then they go back tight again. Yeah, yeah but... I'm, I'm that right, right there, there's, here to here, they there's probably 20, right there. 20 in that half inch. Yeah. Right here also, that's probably just uh -huh. a yeah, yeah, so, real right, dry 20 years or so. Uh, yeah, yeah, from this angle here, you can uh, uh, actually see it. So 
the the uh, 660 count it, it's probably, probably low very very conservative steve let me ask you a question adley you fill in uh if you like the outer area of the of the cut there shows a greenish color uh is that from the minerals in the water this was a sunken uh, uh log yeah oh yeah, yeah and, it's been in the bottom of the river for 100 and so when the when this is cut uh cut those cuts are going to show up in the boards as a greenish color is that copper in the water that the tree is absorbing i really don't know what it but it's some mineral. It's, some, it's the mineral uh, from the uh, leaves and the mud and, and, right. and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I've heard some people say that. And, and uh, uh, my pet theory is is sulfur. Okay. Uh, 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 down around some of the areas where this stuff comes from. And, and one of the common terminologies for this is black cypress, which, which it, sometimes it's jet black, but it's often charcoal gray or purplish. And it, it's very beautiful. But I've noticed over the years that the uh, black cypress I've cut had a strong sulfur a uh, odor, okay. and, and the area it come from uh, would I sometimes have sulfur. Sprays. Is that also known as swamp gas? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, sir. laughs> uh -huh. Let me let me ask you uh, a question about uh, the term deadhead. Is this a deadhead cypress? Yes. Sir. What I what is the definition that that loggers use? What does that mean? The, the, the uh, uh, dead head was the, the uh, cypress. If, if you cut the, the, the old growth cypress down, it wasn't very buoyant to start off with. And so the, the method that the people would use to uh, cut it, they'd go out and ring the trees and let them stand there for several years gotcha. and, and uh, try to float them down the river. But the trees growing back off of the river, they call that a timber head. And then when they went in and deadened it, the, uh, uh, the, the terminology just uh, turned into dead head. And and they cut, the, they let the trees stand there for uh, one to three years, sometimes a little more, and cut them down and cut them into length, and then go out there and try to raft them during flood times. And sometimes the water would get too high and wash them farther back into the swamps and sometimes the water wouldn't get high enough and it would just re-soak them with water and a, 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 a tree like this even when this wood is dry it, it's going to be so dense it's not going to have a lot of buoyancy well now um the term uh, sinker cypress or sinker heart pine uh, that uh that says that the log is heavier than water is that yes, what that means yes it, it would have a a, a a heavier than water so when this was ringed as you say they were trying to get some of the moisture to come out so it would flow yes sir. And, yeah yeah uh, and apparently was this found as far as you know adley near uh where it was cut i i, I don't i don't have any idea about okay. that i mean it could have been rafted Five miles, two miles, twenty miles. It's just hard to say. Yeah, and uh, often, I mean, these people, <clears throat> as hard as it is to believe, they would go out there and try to build these rafts during floods. I mean, like, like the logs would be there, they'd cut them down, cut them to length, and then they'd wait for the flood to come and go out there in flood conditions and uh, to, uh, 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 try to build these things into rafts. And even, you know, like if you imagine like taking a motorboat with a motor and driving around out there in the flood, how, how treacherous that would be building a log raft in those conditions. But I guess back then they were motivated people that knew how to do it. <laughs> and, uh, and and uh, they actually, they were successful in getting a lot of them. Yeah, but you then, mean desperate? <laughs> yes, <or> probably. <laughs> and uh, the... Uh, but if the log raft got away from them or sunk or, or, or even if they were successful in building the raft, they might get it out in the river. And, and you know, the high water conditions, they might not make the curve. Or if the water weren't quite high enough, if they got up, you know, were sitting on a sandbar and it just sat there on the sandbar, I mean, it was already barely floating anyway. And then it soaked back full of water and then they didn't. 
they didn't have no choice except to go back and try to get some more. So they harvested a lot of them, but they also lost a lot of them. And so people today all along the Gulf Coast and along the southern Atlantic Coast are, are locating these uh, uh, sunken logs uh, from the 19th century. Is that what's happening? Y yes, sir, and uh, 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 pretty much worldwide. I mean, the, 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 the same situation up until probably the... Uh, uh, 1900s or, or the, the the mechanical log harvesting which I, I, I'm accustomed to and most people are accustomed to it is a relatively uh, recent phenomena you know the a, a, a water logging was the way people done it from the beginning of time up until the 1900s or something you know they started with the steam engines and the winches and what they call the donkey engines and stuff. Well, but when they got them in the, in, when they got these logs in the water and they got them lashed together in rafts, how did they, what did they use to move the rafts? They pulled. They, they, yes, they pulled, man. They rode those rafts down and pulled. And, and it, it, they, they uh, around here, they often took them down to the Gulf and uh, uh, put them on boats and, and sent them uh, either to the New England states or overseas or uh, uh, out to the islands and all. But the uh, around here, the, the, in, in the Mississippi River and around here, uh, especially on the Mississippi, when they started having the steam-powered sawmills, it, it, if the sawmill owned a raft and, and, and something happened that the raft didn't turn in at the sawmill, that, then it, it, it would miss their turn and then their raft would be devalued because they'd have to sell it to the man down the river and, and they'd know they were in a spot because they couldn't <laughs> turn around and come back upstream. Now, what is the length of this particular section of the 25-foot tree? Well, it, 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 uh, the, the stream about, length... Uh, go ahead. Not, go ahead, Steve. It's about 16 feet. Y yeah, I, 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 I was going to agree with Adley. The, uh, uh, of one measurement is 14 and probably the stream is uh, uh, 17, but probably average 16. Ready to cut the other one up and see what it looks like? Sure. Tell him what you made it from. Okay, uh, 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 this is a, uh, a, 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 a thin curve uh, saw head that uh, I'd made. Uh, uh, this axle's right here it is a 30,000 pound Rockwell semi axle that was cut up. This end's capped off for an idle. This one over here has got a custom drive shaft that gets power from this uh, Perkins diesel. The Perkins diesel came on a military Hobart welder, but we changed it out and put a hand clutch on it. It's, it's, uh, uh, the saw is belt driven, and then the other parts of it is actuated off of that hydraulic pump. It's got a hydraulic system and a hydraulic blade. This uh, right here, is, is this is made out of a lot of recycled uh, uh, Fort lifts and a, a recycled semi bed. This a, a saw head right now is set up with an 18 foot blade, and the space from here to there is, is a 40 inches. But we're fixing to change to a 22 foot blade, and this space is going to change to a 64 inches. So uh, it, it won't take us very long to uh, uh, change the blade. We're going to change it out. And, and crank it, but it's uh, a, a, a largely recycled material. What uh, what some people refer to as junk. I, I told my wife the other day I had the uh, theory of spontaneous junk. Y'all know about like spontaneous <laughs> yeah, junk. My, my theory is if you get enough junk in a pile, then it'll spontaneously turn into something. Did you have it in vision first, or did you go find the parts? Uh, and decide what to do with them? Uh, uh, probably sort of simultaneously. It, it was like the uh, uh, evolution, you know, like one one part sparked another idea. Like this track is uh, come off of an old Fritz sawmill, and uh, then, then we've got several other things, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm what you call a junkologist. Well, now, Steve, <laughs> I, I believe I see uh, the bed of a... Of a, uh, of a a tractor trailer down here. Is that part of this? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, uh, this machine is actually on nine of uh, uh, semi flat beds. Nine <laughs> semi flat beds and, and parts of uh, five forklifts. Now, what's at, the at widest least. log or the widest cut you can make on the log with your rig right now? 
Uh, we think around five foot. The widest I've actually made was uh, 56 inches, which is four foot eight inches. And uh, uh, Adley, I, I've cut several pieces for Adley over the years. And uh, I, I don't know, we we got some pieces we've pushing got some five 40, foot. Yeah, yeah, we've got some, what, 50 we, something? We've got some 52s and 54s. Uh -huh. right yeah, yeah, there's a piece laying right there that's like a, a, a 52, but uh, a, a, around five foot. We've maxed it out. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, but but we uh, building another machine, which will be another chapter. But uh, 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 we hoping it'll go uh, 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 cut a five foot log directly in half, and we probably cut a six foot slab. But they such a thing as that. That's, that's rapid, but you haven't found one yet. What 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 the six foot? Yeah, yeah, I know where some are at. Oh. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, around this part of the country, a, a five or six foot log is getting pretty big, but uh, other parts, you know, further west, a five or six foot ain't all that big. So, you know, they, they got trucks and trains and stuff, so we can get them from anywhere. Okay. <laughs> it's been for the time. All right, we, we're going. Okay, a, a, a while ago when we was talking about the people uh, 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 cutting the deadhead material and assembling them into rafts, that they'd have like a, a guide log or, or a pin log and, and they would drill holes in it and drive, drive these pigs in it and, and attach uh, ropes and chains to, to make the perimeter of the raft and hold the raft together. And, and sometimes uh, this was, in any day and age, this was considered a large valuable log. <coughs> and, and they probably said, well, we really can't risk losing it and so they uh, uh, double pegged it and probably uh, uh, tied it as well as possible, but still didn't work out. But it is working out now. Okay. The sheep's out of light. A laser, a laser transit? Yes, yeah, so a laser transit that will you know, shoot out of line. And I come out here in the afternoon and, and took all of this stuff and had my jacks and shims and all ready and uh, uh, jacked this up and leveled it and, and leveled the carriage and all of it looked good and it was okay. it was pretty good but bouncing a 12 or 15 thousand pound log on it a few times gonna it, drive it into the sand uh, isn't it so how yeah. often do you have to re-level the bed on the uh, on the on the mill oh yeah, yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after today, you'll be doing it again, yeah, right? Yes, yeah, so we're going to be doing it. And, and actually, this machine, uh, uh, we build it to, to saw giant logs, but, but the definition of giant, you know, like <laughs> it, 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 if you jump 10 foot in there, you know, then the next foot time you got to jump 10 and a half. Right. So, uh, but the uh, uh, size-wise on the saw head, we still got plenty of room. Weight-wise on the carriage, if it had if it hadn't have been a weight situation with the carriage, we could have cut this whole log. But we're building another machine that's going to have a dedicated flatbed for one log, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping you know it'll be the answer for a while. Now that's going to be the cross super mill. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's, it's going to be the the, the super duper uh, cotton picker thing. You mean a cotton picker in a former life is not going to turn into part of the new cross Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, so we used to make peanut pickers in the saw mill, so now we're moving up the cotton picker. <laughs> so now, are, uh, is this another example of uh, sort of the spontaneous generation of things out yeah, of yeah, junk? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so <laughs> this is what we call spontaneous junk. So, so, uh, I mean, it seems to be really true that there's only a certain number of mechanical shapes, and if you've got enough choices, you can almost always uh, figure out something. Like the ideas that I try, if I had to go buy a, a thousand or two thousand dollars <laughs> worth of iron, I, I might would be a little How far away do we need to be? It, <laughs> 22 <laughs> feet. You need, let's see. you need to be 11, at least 11 feet away. I sort of figure out how to do it now. But I was telling Adley, I said, let me put these gloves on, and I'm going to be careful. I had a brand new pair of leather welding gloves. And that day looks like. It, uh, let me look out that sharp that sucker is. Uh, that's electric. That can't be resharpened too many times, can it? Uh, a couple. Yeah, because it's just electro-hardened. Hey, yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, I don't try to sharpen them anyway, but oh. when the uh, a blade, before I, I figured out to put this stick in it, 
it jumped apart, ripped my day welding gloves, and uh, <laughs> cut my hand. But, uh, Hold her right there, see? Let me get a picture of you. All right. Look up. Very good. All right. Okay, okay now watch this. This is, I, I know this from my little band, so. Hey, it, 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 if it's single folded, it ain't too bad, but this uh, a double fold is uh, <laughs> It's, it's going to be a rattlesnake. <laughs> yeah. Ready to strike. Yeah. I, oh, man. That scares me just to look at it. Yeah, yeah. If, if you can let the pressure off of it, and that blade is twenty-two feet long. Yes, yeah, yeah, so this one is the, the one we uh, take it off is eighteen. We can run from a, a seventeen to a twenty-two, and and we think it's possible we might could put a twenty-three or a twenty-four on there. But uh, uh, when you add a foot of length, you add six inches to your throat. So we adding a uh, four foot. So we're gonna make the throat uh, two foot wide. Okay. Now so, uh, you know if if my wife saw saw these uh, saw this right here, she would say this wasn't organized. But Steve, uh, I bet you can find anything that uh, that you're looking for. Hey, well, it, it, it's actually a uh, sort of. Uh, uh, funny because uh, I mostly can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't doubt it for a second. I don't doubt it for a second. But uh, my wife's a, a, a very neat person, and uh, <laughs> she always tells me that I ought to get uh, more organized. But, uh, I just, uh, I'm just a slob. <laughs> You know what about being a slob? I hate being a slob. <laughs> the only thing I hate worse than being a slob is not being one. Trying, trying to do something about it. <laughs> That's bad, ain't it? Ain't it? Good <laughs> Lord. All right. Now, now, see, uh, our teeth are facing the wrong way. See, when it's going on the uh, sawmill? Right. So what you do about that? Yeah. It's, it's easy to see how you inside can out. really get <laughs> cut badly with that thing. Hey, uh, uh, a, a regular thing about these things right here, they'll definitely make you leak. <laughs> hey, when we go up there on that sawmill, that middle deck there has got some rotten boards. Okay. So it, it, if you step across to the other side, it's pretty solid. This side's still, but okay. uh, uh, just be careful about where you walk especially All right. with the camera. All right. All right. All right. You going? What we're going to do now is, is we're going to loosen this adjuster. We're going to take this 18 foot blade off and change to the 22. So uh, I'm, I'm just, I'll just start doing it, and, and you can, uh, uh, like I said, be careful where you walk, and, uh, and uh, we'll change this blade out and get the show on the road. Right on over here if you want to, Mark. Mark. Yeah, I got a good shot right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, can I help you do anything, Steve? Yeah, let's, uh... It, it, you want to go around the other side and set that band yeah, off? Yeah, yeah uh, uh, set it off. You have to undo that spring on the, uh, uh that end there. But, yeah, yeah uh, uh, take it off and, uh... Let's see here, I got to grab a cup of this thing, this thing ought to be in a museum. A uh -huh. work of art. Hey, it's a, uh... It's a hell of a pile of junk now. Now, do you put a specific torque on it, or is it by feel? Uh, well, <laughs> the blade, I, I've actually got what they call a, a, a tensiometer, which I think is incorrect terminology. I, I prefer the word strain. It, 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 strain take, gauge? Well, well stri tension, they say small bands don't run a tension. We, we were discussing about the, the blades and all, but the, the tension in terms of, of saw blades... And band saw blades refer to the shape it assumes when it's operating. Mm -hmm. right. Strain refers to how hard it's pushed apart. Most people use the terminology tension, but if you get into the technical discussion, you either have to go back to the established terminology 
or, or establish some terminology. Make up your own. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we're good about that. What kind of torque does this generate when it's running? Uh, uh, it's a 236 Perkins and it uh, runs, the, the, the torque on it is it, it, 65 horsepower and uh, I think it's also uh, 236 foot pounds of torque. So for a, a, a thin curved band, it's... Is that after gearing or is that a straight drive? I, 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 I rated it the fly wheel. But uh, then, then we're running uh, about a uh, one to three. So we probably put about 600 pounds on the side. Total, yeah, 600 foot pounds. So you don't anticipate it bogging down in this uh, big log here? Mm, no, sir. I... Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's going to cut it. We hope it does. Hey, you know, they say about sawmills, don't, sawmills and youngins and dogs don't never say for sure what they're going to do. But, uh, <laughs> what does 600 foot-pounds do when it hits a pretty good-sized nail? Dulls of saw. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, sir. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it uh, uh, usually uh, cuts the nails, but it'll uh, uh, ruin the blade in terms of a smooth cut. It'll often clip the uh, nail off, but it'll bend the blade enough, like our surface, a, a, a lot of what we uh, manufacture is high value material, and, and it's important to have this smooth surface, and if it hits a nail, even if the blade quit, keeps cutting, it, it, it'll put an ugly mark across it. It'll have a tooth bend. Yeah, 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 it'll, it'll, uh, uh, several it, teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it'll uh, 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 impact your surface. And, and also sometimes it, it'll uh, cause your blade to degrade enough, it'll make a uh, wavy lumber. What's it'll, the lead time between a new blade? How long uh, does it take you to change the blade, Steve? Uh, 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 how, how long does it take? Uh, if you got to bring one in, if you don't have a spare. Uh, 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 we always, uh, we try to keep uh, at, at least, you know, several, s several in reserve. And uh, so, so the lead, if, if, if we break this blade, it's going to take me as long as I can walk up there at the house and get another one. We've got, okay. we've got this one and uh, four new spares this size. And, uh, so that's five nails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh, uh, hopefully it ain't going to have no metal in it, but if it does, uh, 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 we prepared for it. In a year's time, we'd usually run about, we buy a, a six to $10,000 worth of blades. But, you know, maybe, maybe a, Hundred and fifty dollars. If, if, if we're running and, and 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 running pretty regular, maybe in a week's time, a hundred and fifty dollars for blades. But but in a week's time, we should be uh, producing, you know, a, a, a way more lumber that, that that's just the cost of doing it. Okay. But uh, uh, we run all new blades and uh, uh, try to keep them sharp because it, it really don't make sense to mess up a thousand dollar blade. I mean, a thousand-dollar slab for a fifty-dollar blade. So, so it, it, if the blade gets questionable, uh, uh, we take it off and pitch it and put a new one on there. All right.
get that. 